And there's also how many pages did I say? There's 82 Not, pages. Yeah, 80 something pages. 82 pages of um I guess is is it what is it called? Is it testimony? Is it um yeah, I mean I guess you could say that. Just I, I started reading, I got through um I don't know how many pages I got through, but it's a lot. There's a lot. I and I thought Janelle's was long winded. This one's really long. Well, this is a little longer than Janelle's, but um I think Janelle's was like what 75, 76 pages. This one's 80 pages. But this um this goes into detail as well uh about things that had happened. So first of all, let's just play a little snippet um of the video the video is online if you want to watch it in its entirety uh yes. it's all over the internet it's all over. yes i got this from brandon thurston of wrestlenomics he uh go. he shared this earlier it's from the decello levitt law firm who was uh defending the five uh john doe ring boys uh which just pointing out too when you read the lawsuit they show pictures of that chronicle all the yeah. uh, the years uh, it's unbelievable all right but we're gonna pick it up not going through the whole thing but we're gonna pick it up uh around the time where they start to talk to the ring boys in the video and we'll just kind of mm, take a you know minute or two from this uh this snippet okay here we go ring announcer named mel phillips the ring announcer approached me after the show he said uh, they were going to philadelphia would i like to go He'd stand outside the car while all the little kids were playing and show them the belts. Like he always pulled out the belts. I was uh, 13 years old when I met Mel Phillips. Actually, I did say, uh, I recognize you. You're Mel Phillips, the ring announcer. He said he wanted me to do him a favor. And I followed him into the dressing room. Once that door was closed, threw me down on the ground, got on top of me. He asked me, you want to go inside? And you could see all the wrestlers. And, you know, I was thrilled. There was a very material harm that was happening okay so that now goes into tom cole which again we talked about back in i think it was almost de november december of last year when we did all the vince mcmahon uh chronicling on our yeah. two-part special so he was basically forcing himself on these young kids oh yeah to not use certain terminology but he was forcing himself um they, sh they just showed a picture. The, the the poor kid was on the ground and that Phillips guy was on top of him and his hands were behind. It, it looked like he was restraining his hands and his wrist behind his back. Um, it, it's it just disturbing, uh, very disturbing. Um, the, this part... Um, where did I see it? Here it is. Um, was talking about one of the one one of the John Doe's. Um, they said there was a the FBI received a videotape and it was shot by a WWE employee, not named, obviously. Uh, they're saying that this tape was in possession of the WWE well before it was ever sent to the FBI. And the FBI documented at least 10 ring boy victims, 10 of them. Now, yes. did they, did they, like when we went over uh, the scandal before, did they know that they had these videotapes and that WWE was aware of these tapes that were held by, like who held these tapes? So the tape in question was uh, WWF footage that was discovered where they were ringside and that's what was collected. So this happened at ringside with the, with the foot in the, the one, the one that they're talking about that was confiscated by the FBI or I don't know. I would just, how would you describe it? Confiscated or turned over or whatever they would say that that one. And again, that's why they're saying the WWE WWF had knowledge of it is because it was in their possession uh, in their archives. It was a part of their library. So how about, do we know anything about uh, the the videos that were behind closed doors? Because uh, if you keep reading, it says that Phillips had an, exp he used an expensive video camera. He had this camera that he used, right? right and right. 
he would record things that happened between him and these underage ring boys. Now, was there somebody else recording for him? Was he setting up a camera it, like, uh, you know, under a tail so nobody would see it like a pro, you know? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. Because back then, you know, people, it was such an underground thing. If you were going to do, if you think of the movie Autofocus, which is a Greg Kinnear movie about the guy from Hogan's Heroes. I can't remember uh, his name at the moment. Kind of a similar thing with the hidden camera, you know, uh, filming his exploits. But he either has to have somebody filming it or he's got a tripod at the time. But if it's going to be a big one. You know, you're not going to be hiding it. But the one that's confiscated, I'm going to guess, is that one that maybe didn't realize was being filmed. And that's why he was doing whatever he was doing. I would doubt that he would be doing something like that in plain sight of a video lens if he knew that that was the possible risk. So that's my guess. And it's, again, why he was completely got just whisked away because that now the WWF is really implicated because there's their footage is now confiscated. But is that the only footage that they had? Cause see, I, 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 I think, I, I think it's the only tape that came from their archive. I want to know where all these other videos are. I have to keep reading and, and we wanted to record so quickly. I didn't have time to read again, the, the 80, 90 pages. Um, but it does talk about him having a, a video camera and him recording these meetings with the children. Yeah. Well, here you go. Point uh, causes of action in the lawsuit point number 251. And this is one of the things I was going to say later, but I'll just make the point slightly. Now we can still talk about it um, as successor uh, as successor entities, WWE and TKO acquired any and all assets and liabilities for the entity WWF and therefore are liable for the conduct of the principals, agents, and employees that occurred in the course and scope of their employment and or furtherance of the WWF business and brand. So they're saying we have that tape. We have all that stuff. It happened on the old guards watch, but this is your responsibility. So maybe they want to go through stuff. They're held accountable now. Yeah. What happened to all this. Right. Okay. Well, I th understand that. Um, I'm, no, just I'm saying maybe they want to still go through stuff. Who knows? Maybe yeah, but where are these stuff. tapes? That's what I'm saying. Like, are there more tapes out there? Because they got these pictures, these weird pictures, right? Yeah, they're weird. I, I mean, they're, they're, they're very bizarre. That's incredible. Like, like just, you know, all these pictures are are uh, scattered through this, this report that I'm reading. And it's like, are there other videotapes out there that are submitted for this? You know, um, because there were there were different things shown in that five minute video, different little uh, pictures and stuff. So they got those pictures. Are there tapes? That's what I'm curious about. 